can't believe I'm telling you some of these stories, but... If you don't want to tell them, tell me and I'll edit them out. That's okay, okay, because I don't know how much time I have, Terry. I mean, I could die at any time. I have an AVM in my head. My brain bleeds. That's why I'm telling you these stories, so that maybe if somebody does find them, they could share it with Terry. So, help Terry and my daughter, actually. So, I went to Rango, and he's agreed to tell me a few things here on video. And uh, so, so first off, I want to ask you, you know, you're a treasure hunter, but what got, why did you get interested in treasure hunting? And tell me about your, your growing up and what went on with you and things like that. Well, Terry, I uh, grew up as a young kid, and my dad would take us out treasure hunting because he knew a guy named Wobbin Wanzite, and my mother knew him also. And she didn't like Wobbin because he, his other name, they called him, was Thomas. And I guess he had a foul mouth. He was full-blooded Ute Indian. And uh, so my dad would had a bar in Brigham. And uh, before my dad's bar, they went to the Eagles there in Brigham City. And he talked to Wabba Wanzite, feed him some alcohol. And Wabba would tell my father stories, which uh, my father, I don't have a picture of him right here with me, but he was... Uh, half-breed Cherokee Indian and uh, Wobbin would get drunk and tell my dad stories. Wobbin said, buy me a drink and I'll tell you a story. So Wobbin would tell us stories, my dad's stories. Before you know it, there we went, off to the Uintas, looking for treasure. And, uh, and you were just a kid at this time. Yes, I was just a kid. How old, how old do you think? Uh, when I first started going treasure hunting, I was probably eight years old. And then as I was starting to grow older, uh, we would take my cousins and uh, we'd find some pretty intriguing things. Like, but I will explain to you in this story, uh, storyboard that I have right here, that uh, I'm going to write all this up, stuff up on here because every story I tell you is true. It's not like uh, George Thompson's book, uh, Faded Footprints, because, you know, He's probably the truest book I've ever read, George Thompson. A lot of things that he had in his book, i seen. Up in the Smith & Moore House, the South Fork of the Weber River, uh, all the way to Vernal. So i got a whiteboard here because I want to explain to you and draw you pictures of uh, places and roads. And hopefully that someone finds it and will share with Terry or me. Or even my daughter that isn't here. She's 12 years old. But So anyway. So, so let, me, let me stop you again. Because you've been tight-lipped. You haven't really shared a lot. Now all of a sudden you're willing to say a few things. Why is that? Well, because. Say that or not. Uh, yes, I do. I met Terry at Kennecott. That's where I started working. And before I knew Terry, I told him a story of, of a, a treasure site I knew about. And at that time I was working with a guy named Robin. And uh, so I told Terry this story, and as we parted way, Robin told me a story. He said, yeah, Terry's a treasure hunter. Holy crap, really? I didn't know that. What the hell am I doing telling him these stories? So uh, as we got farther along in years, I started trusting Terry more than I trust any other treasure hunter. More than, uh, let's say, uh, Gail Rose, which is dead now. He died in 1988 of a heart attack on... White's Peak, and Kerry Bourne. I can't forget him because he was standing, he was standing there with a, a metal detector somewhere, I'm not sure where, I wish I did, because if he did, I would actually show them where mine was that me and my mother was looking at, and there was treasure signs all over this area. We were walking from a road from where the this fence, this wooden fence was. I think it might have been the strawberry strawberry area but we walked a little ways and I seen a uh, a tree that had a square cut hole in it and you can see all the way through this quake and aspen and I looked through it and as my dad was looking at all these treasure signs uh, me and my mother walked up the hill a little bit to get out of the way while they were checking out all of the treasure signs and uh, lo and behold I looked down by my feet 
And I seen a hole in the ground that the grass was starting to grow over this hole as this tree, this white Quaken aspen was still alive, but it was growing out of a hole. And uh, I said, oh, Mom. My mother was standing with me. And uh, as I looked in the hole, I said, oh, Mom, we need to tell Dad where this, where this uh, mine is. She said, no, do you want your dad going into that hole? And I looked in the hole, which is only about this big, but the grass was actually growing. So the grass is probably growing over it already. But as we were looking around at the Spanish signs, here comes Gail Rhodes. It was Carrie Bourne was walking around there with a metal detector. And I'm not sure where that spot is. So if you guys know of that area, would you please let Terry know because... If you could tell Terry, then we'll know where the mine is. Because I'm not sure exactly where this place where Carrie Bourne was holding this metal detector. And as we walked by him, I asked, Hey, Mom, what's he carrying? And Carrie Bourne yelled out and said, It's a metal detector. And I thought, I'll be darned. So anyway, I'm going to start. So, so, I want to back you up, Ken. Okay, go ahead, Terry. Because uh, do you want to tell about your situation or not? Why are you willing to say some of these things and pass it on? Or um, maybe at the end of the story I might think about it. Okay. So as I go on, I'm going to talk about the Smith & Moore house first. And as you're going to the Smith & Moore house, uh, there's a reservoir right here. Uh, this is all water. Okay. And uh, here's a parking area right here. And then the road goes right along the Smith & Moore house and then goes over here to the Ledge Fort Campground. I'm sure that you guys are familiar with the Smith & Moore house if anybody's ever been up that way. And then there's a tree right here and there's a road that goes up towards Red Pine Canyon. And that is the road where a lot of mines are. Matter of fact, uh, if you're sitting right here on the north side of the reservoir with your car, and you look straight west, you'll see a rock ledge right here that I seen when I was a kid. And it's still there except for the pillars are starting to fall. But it actually has a door and an arch on top with a rock bell carved inside of it. And uh, I'm not a very good artist, but as we come along the edge of this, uh, and this is all mountain right here. Uh, there's windows on the side of this arch or on the side of this mission and on the front there are uh, pillars that look like pillars and if you look at it about this time of year it is uh, actually December just before Christmas now uh, there's a a trail that looks like a yellow brick road and that kind of curves a little bit but it's all shell rock as you're coming down uh, I probably should have drew that <laughs> upwards instead of upside down, but you get my point. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, Ledge Fork Campground. So we'll put it up here, Ledge Fork, real quick. Ledge Fork Campground. So anyway, this road right here goes to Red Pine Canyon, and it'll actually go off. And this is actually a road that is... Uh, Actually, the Smith and Morehouse. This is what they call the Smith and Morehouse. Not the Smith and Morehouse. This is the Smith and Morehouse Trail. And this road keeps going up to uh, uh, Mud Lake Flat, they call it. So, anyway, I'll tell you a little bit about Mud Lake Flat. And it kind of is a big area right here. A lot of people go up there camping. or And that's quite the the trail when you get over coming up and around this bend because the rocks are so sharp that I've seen people puncture their tires going to this Mud Lake Flat. Uh, right along here is all cliff ledges. All this is cliff ledges. And uh, over here on this other side, as it comes down like this, uh, there's a river right here, just like there is on the the Smith and Morehouse Reservoir, as the as the the river comes up and goes up towards uh, the upper 
that side of the Provo River. And uh, there's actually a couple different rivers. So one river goes right through around by the uh, Ledge Fort campground and then up here towards uh, Red Pine Canyon, towards the Smith & Morehouse. There's another, there's another uh, river that comes down here and I think it's called uh, Red Creek or something like that. But anyway, this little box canyon right here, this little box canyon has like a little place where people have their cattle. And I'm gonna erase this just a little bit right here, so bear in mind with me, because I'm going over to this box canyon where where uh, I'm drawing this box canyon, the box canyon that comes up here, and then there's an area uh, right here, and then there's cliffs up along here, and the river that comes along here. So, this is the old Spanish trail. So if you follow that river about 100 yards from where this is, you'll see a face on the mountain about 20 feet from the river, uh, a rock face. So let me see if I could get it out for a minute and show it to you so that people could see it because there's silver. And I know a lot of people aren't into silver, but it's better than nothing. So if you get 100 pounds of silver and you sold it for $5 an ounce, that'll give you $15,000. So if I get my picture up here a little closer to the camera, you'll see that picture. That's the that's a one you're trying to find, the rock. And right down to the left of that, just to the left of that picture right there, so if, if you could even see what I'm trying to show you, uh, right to the left down a little bit, there's a mine and the vent hole to that mine is right there. You can see a little vent hole. So I'm trying to, let me, yeah, can you see it? You can kind of see the hole there. So anyway, so this picture, there's silver and it looks like uh, the, the ledge that you go to it, it comes in just like this. And I spent a lot of time up in the Smith & More house because this is one of the places I remember when I was a kid. Daddy used to take you to? Yes, and uh, I think, I'm not sure if it was Wabin Wanzai that told my dad about this place, but this thing is all covered with dirt, and all this is rock right here, and all this is, uh, so the face of that, that uh, I'll try to draw a picture of it, uh, is, a, is a face, uh, and it has an eyeball and a nose like so, and then part of the eyeball again. And then from over here, it looks like a big old mouth, like he's smoking a big old cigar. Then over here, uh, there comes off this little rock ledge, and it has a little hole right here. So over here, this is where the silver is, and it's got bricks, I believe. That vent hole, if you take all this rock out right here, all these bright, they're stacked like uh, brick, just like like a bricklayer would lay brick. So, if you find that area, the, this rock right here that's snooping in here, this is all iron stained rock. But this right here is black, a black rock with uh, silver splashed all over. It's beautiful as hell. I never taken any of it home, so you'll. If you move the dirt that's, that's flowing off this thing right here, and it's kind of flowing down into it, if you remove that dirt, because I covered it up with dirt so people, could, just not anybody could come up to it because I don't want it destroyed. So it shows spotted silver on it, and it's the most beautiful thing you've probably ever seen. And I've been treasure hunting since I was a kid, but as years went by, and uh, my dad stopped taking me treasure hunting when I treasure hunting when I was 14 years old. Uh, I forgot about some of these things, and then all of a sudden, all my memory came back to me. And I'll explain that on a different video next time I talk to you guys. So anyway, anyway, to talk about the South Fork a little bit more, uh, I spent a lot of time up there last year. And as I hiked across where the river is flowing right along there and the mountain's coming along and you know there's the, the mountain that you're walking against and the river 
keeps going across and there's a little trail before you come to this where the mountain opens up and the mountain just kind of slopes up like this and anyway the river keeps going by so as I was walking across the mountain right here this was in the south fork of the Weber River uh, I took a little dog with me it was a little Maltese dog and I sat down by a tree I was pretty tired and I could see the river, river down here. Um, let me try to draw this out a little better. So I, I have so many stories that I've tried to keep up with them all. But they're all true, I'll guarantee you. So we're going back to the South Fork of the river. South Fork, South Fork. We'll just go SF. And as I was walking, and this is all ledge right here close to the river. So anyway, <clears throat> there's some Spanish signs up here. It's quite the hike from the campground because you can't get up there very good anymore. Uh, so as Terry's looking up the, uh, the South Fork of the Weber River in the book, I'll show you a picture. Uh, but, as, but when we took a break by the South Fork of the Weber River, that I sat on a spot where there was a big old pine tree. And uh, a pine tree, and there was uh, some, like, ground, ground, uh, I didn't know it at the time until later in the year that where I was sitting and there was this green brush and the river and the other mountains over here and there's actually a trail that you can walk on that is very, very clear to see. I was in the river looking at Spanish signs and the Spanish signs were really small on little like logs that were sticking out of the, out of the dirt right off the river and as I was in there I had a long spear and I was poking it into the side where that treasure sign was and I could hit something wood and it was going thunk 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 as I was driving my spear into it I thought wow what the hell is that and I was just about ready to start digging in that spot and all of a sudden this little black cub come into get a drink out of the river as I was carrying this little white Maltese dog with me and uh, anyway the cubs seen me and got scared and I could hear his claws climbing into the tree I mean it happened so fast all I seen was some rocks going down into the river and here comes this big brown bear I mean I swear it was a grizzly I mean this thing was huge the biggest bear I've ever seen and it wasn't black it was a brown bear I think it was a grizzly, but I could be wrong. But all I could say to the dog was, shh, because I was so scared shitless that we were going to die, and I didn't have my gun with me. Um, all I had was a spear <laughs> that I could probably drive under a rock or something in the river, hoping that that bear didn't come after us, because that would have been a perfect appetizer for that little cub of that dog I was carrying. And if the bear would have came after me, I would have... Uh, threw that dog at the bear and ran for my life even though my daughter would have killed me because I killed her dog but anyway um, I want to tell you something about this South Fork oh wait let me finish drawing that tree out right there because up on the mountain where I was sitting right here by this and here's here's part of the the tree and we'll say this is this is the river right here down here okay so I was sitting right there in this, this uh, little green brush that was around this tree, come to find out the mine was actually right there. And I didn't know that. And when I had the dog with me, I was afraid to go into it. But as I was sitting there and me and my, the dog, I was feeding some of the water. As I was looking across the river and looking high up on the mountain where there was a lot of pine trees, well, there's a big opening there's a big opening up there. If you walk along the river, close to the river's edge, up on this little ledge, because it was like maybe seven feet from the river and real steep. I mean, you couldn't climb down it, you'd fall. So I seen this big round circle as I was looking up to the south fork of the Weber River. And uh, I seen this big teepee. It looked like this. And I swear, 
that God is my witness that it looked like a guy with a red shirt on standing in this area of the teepee. And I thought, well, what the heck is that? And I looked up and I had my monocular and I was looking through it. And I actually have a picture of it. And I'm not sure if I could find that on this phone or which phone it was on. Uh, but it looked just like an Indian. It looked just like an Indian standing inside that. And that's one of the reasons I went up to the South Fork. Uh, because I wanted to go up there. I seen a tree through my monocular. And I'm not sure where that picture is, but I'll get it. Um, so I was walking into Indian burial tombs uh, as I went up a week later. And I should have went back into this mine, but I didn't go in there. Uh, because I was worried about the bear eating me. But it's still there to this day. It's a small hole. And this little green brush that was around here, and you'll see this on the west side of the mountain as you're looking. And it's up there a long ways. You'll see. And it looks just like a teepee. So it's not a real, you didn't see a real teepee. It just looked like a teepee, huh? No, I think it was a real teepee. And the Indian was actually... Looked like he was, it's a fake. And I think he was actually protecting the mine. Uh -huh. The mine that was up. So you'd have to go through underneath this tree. And I think there's treasure there to this day. This is on the South Fork of the Weaver River. Because the South Fork comes up, if anybody looks on a map, and kind of curves up as the Smith and Morehouse and the Red, Red Pine Creek comes down. And it's not far from the South Fork. If you look on the maps... The South Fork is not very far from the Smith and Morehouse Creek. So you'd actually have to look up on, uh, a good way to look it up is on uh, a geographic map, which they, is, they're hard to come by now. Uh, but, uh, but that Indian, as I went up there, I started going into these Indian burial tombs. And I know that Terry talked about... Tombs or graves? The tombs or graves? Well, I didn't see I didn't see any bodies in there, but the caves look like this, and this is all rock. But I seen carved in rock the pictures, carved in rock, and they did such a good job of it. I mean, you could describe and see in the carved rock exactly what these guys were wearing, and some. Of, so, 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 you went in there in these and seen these? Yes. And I actually... So they're painted and carved? Colored. No, no, they're carved. they're carved. I mean, if I had a piece of soapstone, I could actually color it all in because their clothing that was carved on the rocks next to these, I call them tombs, because they didn't go back very far, just about long enough for a body to lay into. And some of them had another opening and there was another one right beside it. And on some of them, I only went into about five of them up there on the South Fork. And as anybody knows the South Fork of the Weber River, when you're leaving the South Fork of the Weber River, you'll see a rock up on the ledge, and it looks like an Indian. With the, the feathers or the rocks uh, of the, uh, as you're leaving the South Fork. Uh, by pulling, by pull, by uh, just before you leave, I think Pullum Creek, because the road kind of, as you're coming up, the Pullum Creek comes across, and then you're coming out, and that's where the Indian, the Indian uh, head, uh, the Indian head. If if people know the South Fork as well as I do, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So this, these, these tombs, you, you've seen them, you went in them, oh, yes. bodies in them, or they were just... Uh, I was afraid to dig into them, Terry, but yes, I believe I was walking. Well, you, think, you, never, you never dug, I mean, you went in, you think there could be stuff buried in the bottoms, but you don't... I think they're, dug, yeah, but there was carbon I think they bottom. were the Nephilim, Nephilim giants. Nephilim giants? Yeah, the ones you talk about in videos? Yeah. I swear, that's what it was. So I chipped, I used my chipping hammer my rock hammer, and I chipped off a piece of rock that looked black in color. 
And uh, when I went up there, this is uh, just as you, uh, the road ends in the South Fork, and then all you see is the river. Uh, if you walk up there, you'll see Gale Road's name on a, on a quick and aspen tree. Uh, so I plan to take Terry up there next year because it's not a very far drive from Ogden. It's probably an uh, hour and 20 minutes. So the South Fork and uh, Smith & Morehouse, I spent five years up there looking around. And I did see gold. And I know where gold is up there and silver. But the gold, someone would have to lower somebody off a cliff eight feet in order to see the rock that I seen. And I had a ledge and then a, a little uh, right up the canyon where then this is all mud look, mud lake flat right up in here. Okay? So this rock was covered in black oil, but there was two perfectly round circles on this rock that protruded off the iron stain cliffs. There was two on top and there was two on the bottom. And uh, if I had a 25 cent piece, I'd be able to lay that right over there. It's like they used a tool and hit it with their hammer to mark, and this was all white quartz, crystally white quartz. So I dug a hole, I chipped it with my hammer, just a small spot. And this right here is where the cliff is. This, I made this picture just a little bit bigger, but I chipped out a little spot right here and you can see a vein of gold running through there. And uh, anyway, when I started chipping on the mountain slid and I fell off that cliff about 20 feet. You fell off it, you said? Yeah, I fell off of it about 20 feet and I was laying and I was all bloody. And, you know, it, if anybody knows the Smith & Morehouse, this is where this rock is. Mud Lake flat up here, and uh, I can't believe I'm telling you some of these stories, but... If you don't want to tell them, tell me, and I'll let them out. That's okay, okay, because I don't know how much time I have, Terry. I mean, I could die at any time. I have an AVM in my head. My brain bleeds. That's why I'm telling you these stories, so that maybe if somebody does find them, they could share it with Terry, because if it wasn't for Terry, you would not know the things that you know now. So... I have a little 12 year old that. So, you really, what you'd like is to help your daughter out. Yeah, so help Terry and my daughter actually, because without Terry, uh, and I've actually taken my daughter up here to the Smith Moore house, and that I had to carry her on my back, which was kind of hard because I had to put my backpack on the front of my chest as I carried my daughter on my back. So, so the Smith and Moore house and the South Fork are very intriguing. I know a lot of people don't. Check out that area very much, and there's a lot of mines up there that don't have anything in them. But there is a place up on the on the Smith and Moore House that you'll see uh, where the where uh, the Ledge Fort Campground is. We'll say the Ledge Fort Campground is over here, and then the 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 we talked about the Smith and Moore House. This is. Uh, uh, the lake up there in the Smith and Moore House. And on the north side, you'll see the Spanish mission that I talked about earlier that had the door and the windows on the side and this and that. So there's a road that goes by the Smith and Moore House Reservoir and it comes up here like this. Actually, it goes back a little bit further. So let's move this over here a little bit more because these cliffs and these mountains are very steep. So as you're coming up, there's a little campsite right here, and the road keeps going by, and there's like a little tree right there, and there's openings that you can get into this little campsite that's room for one trailer. So, and then the, just before that one, there's a bigger one, but it's really rocky. And uh, we're going to talk about the Smith Moore House again, because I know I jump around a lot, so please bear with me. My head's a little messed up. But when you see that in the cliffs, that symbol... And it looks like actually uh, arrows from down from, from this campsite. It looks like, uh, let's see if I can draw an arrow. Um, <clears throat> anyway, hang tight while well, I try to figure out how to draw. So it looks like arrows. So 
These are two separate treasures right here. And I'll tell you what, uh, when you're climbing this mountain, it is very steep. A lot of trees, a lot of trees up here. But when you see that... That's in the rock, carved in the rock. It's carved in the rock, a window, yep. And that actually looks like two arrows from this campsite. So you got to look close. And as you travel down this road, you'll come to the Smith & Morehouse Box Canyon. That's where the real Smith & Morehouse is in the box canyon that's why they call it the smith and morehouse because it looks like a thumb sticking out so if you look at the weaver rivers it looks like a a, a hand stretched out the rivers look like a hand it, most treasure hunters probably know that so where this these cliffs are right here that's cliffs okay so <clears throat> i've hiked all the way along this and if you come to a spot where there's steps of rocks coming up and you'll see a mine opening right here which is still open today if you go up there which is a very rugged hike it takes me two hours non-stop I mean that was a the more you hike the better you get I always say so anyway the Forest Service went and bought sheep Mountain sheep, not like not like the mountain sheep you see in southern Utah. These sheep are. Uh, let's see if I could draw one out for you. Uh, uh, they're real ugly, son of a beast. Uh, they're real long body, and uh, but their horns grow clear out to like their back. I mean, it comes clear out like this, these horns do. And uh, very weird looking sheep. I, I thought, wow, pretty weird looking. So the, they like to stay in this mine right here. And there's probably shit and all kinds of stuff in this mine. But uh, as you're walking along, uh, there's a spot where it's kind of open and it's really sketchy to walk across because it's so steep. But if you walk along, there's a great big, huge pine tree up there that's kind of partially live and dead. But it's the first canyon. It's the first canyon that you come to. And where I fell off and went back the next year, that canyon is no longer a small little canyon like this that you would walk along a little brush and go up up here to this opening where that gold ledge is that I was telling you about that had the two quarters on the top of this iron stained cliff. You had to be standing right over the top of it to actually see it because the oil that they covered this white quartz rock with, the one that looked like this, and then there was a ledge, and then there's a little... There used to be, it's not anymore, unless for some odd reason the mountain made all the slide rock come back down. But inside that little rock ledge, this ledge was all smooth, all smooth right here. And off that edge of that rock, there was an owl head carved out of rock. And I thought, man, look at that, there's a bird, I called it a bird symbol. But it looked more like an owl than an eagle. So when I seen the two circles on this rock, you actually had to be standing right over the top of it to see it. And uh, if you guys want to go up, any treasure hunters, uh, I'll take you up there. Me and Terry, if he's around or if he's not working, because I'd really like to try to help as many people out as I can. Uh, this is... Uh, places from my own experience but I never did go into this mine even though these the, the father and the mother uh, sheep had a baby and uh, they were walking right along the ledge of that cliff on practically I don't know how they even stood on that cliff ledge but uh, it was pretty intriguing watching them walk across that so there's a mine that's not far from that little symbol that looks like that. 
And this is actually open. This is all black because once you go inside this mine, that is the window that you can look out. That's how the Spaniards got up there and looked out that that. Uh, that's a hole coming. That's a hole in that. Yeah, in the rocks that you could look down into the canyon down below. And uh, the Smith and Moore House. A lot of people haven't really uh, did a lot of exploring in that area, but. So is that where your dad took you a lot then? Was uh, Morehouse? That's why you go there a lot. I did that. I went up there a lot because no, he only took us one time. Oh. He took us to a lot of places in the Uintas because of uh, uh, Wabun Wanzai would tell my dad. He told him one story that we actually seen uh, uh, over towards Mountain Home, Utah. We found gold coins. Well, anyway. My dad wrote in a book, it's called Treasure Atlas. And he said, the place that we were at was 10 miles west, northwest of Mountain Home on the east side of Rock Creek. So I still struggle trying to find this place again because... How old was he? Uh, I was probably 12, 13 years old. Uh, yeah, probably about 12 or 13 because I think that was about the last place we seen. And I seen... Uh, uh, the the mountain the mountains and mountain home uh, is really hard to explain this because the mountain was only like maybe 30 feet high but we parked into a spot that looked like uh, Robin Wanza I told my dad it was a horse foot track and the gold was brown and he wasn't lying because when we climbed the mountain uh, it was rolling mountains when we looked over the top of this one but we camped down here in our trailer and I had my cousins with me and they had a little longer trailer and I asked my dad why didn't we park in the horse foot track and he said there was only enough room for one trailer. So we parked on the edge. And here is the road that goes towards Moon Lake and Twin Pots. So I really believe this is one of the, one of Caleb Rhodes' mines. And I still look for it to this day. Uh, so in case I don't live on, um, because of your brain deal? Because of my AVM, yep. It's an arterial venous malfunction in my head. So, we would hike up along this trail, an old trail, and we seen uh, an arrow, an arrow right off the trail. This is my trail right here. And we seen an arrow in the ground out of small rocks with one cedar tree that was not very big it's probably a lot bigger now so as we were walking along this trail i started to climb and then there was this rock that uh, uh you couldn't see it very good because of the trees that were coming up but there was actually brown gold and it looked just like this and it went into a depression right there and here's the rock itself, and there were some trees. You mean uh, brown gold, is that, in that, is that, that the vein is what, what it's looking like? You're saying? Yes, and there was actually a depression, and I wasn't know what a depression was, but as me, my cousins were right here, and I was about to tell JR, because he was intrigued by this arrow that was on the ground, over towards uh, Mountain, Home, Mountain Home area. Uh, the brown gold is an indication what kind of gold was in this mine and when I was walking back from this from this area uh, I was down here standing and they were up here and I was talking to myself getting ready to tell my cousin about this arrow on the ground and it's in the, a book called the treasure atlas and so a lot of these short stories that are in treasure atlases made by uh, Thomas P. Terry that was his name. Those treasures in those small magazines are actually true. So when they talked about this arrow, I think my dad is actually the one that told Thomas about this. And 
But my dad lied to him, said it was 10 miles west, northwest of Mountain Home, but actually it was closer to Twin Pots than most people think. So anyway, here was the road, and here was our camp, and where we were sitting at camp, we had our fire right here. Uh, I could see cars driving by, but only for a short distance. I could only see their headlights for a short distance because of the mountain terrain. And uh, from where this brown gold was, we went down along the river, and I think the, the river was Lake Fork River. We, we came down to where the river was, and we seen a cabin, a cabin that was only a half cabin, and I'll try to draw this the best I can, uh, and this is all cliff ledge, and there was one door with three steps. And as we walked into this cabin, there was next to this, this cliff, it was stuck right to the cliff ledge, but when we walked into the cabin, it had a door, and we walked along the, the river, so this is, pretend like this isn't the road anymore, this is the river, and this, and this was all rock ledge right here. I know I don't make a lot of sense, but anybody that's ever seen this. So you had to get, walk in the river to get to it then? Yes, and the river was very low, so we could walk on rocks to get to where we were going. And I think... So you was on the other side of the river and you walked across? Yes, and then that's where we came off of this trail and as we were walking back to camp. We spent a lot of time out in the mountains and uh, we never told our parents what we seen other than my cousin Jesse. So we knocked on the door and it opened just a little bit. And as we walked in, there was only a, a two foot by two foot table with one chair. And along that cliff ledge, there was boards along that wall of the cabin. And as we walked into the cabin, there were circles all over the floor and a lot of dust. So it's funny that we didn't walk on any of these coins. We avoid walking on them. But as I picked up one off the table, and there were several of them on this table. There was coins on the table and on the floor? Yes. So... I picked up a coin off the table out of this cabin and I showed my cousin, my three cousins, I said, look, there's one for each of us. And my cousin Jesse said, put it back, it's not yours. Like most parents would say, it's not like it is today. Like most parents would say, oh yeah, you should grab that. Well, my parents always said, don't touch anything that's not yours. So we... But this is your little cousin. This was my cousin, yes. And they were between years younger than me. So I was the oldest one. But uh, anyway, welcome back. We so, so, you, so you left and there was a bunch of coins there. You don't know what was they... <laughs> I think they were $20 gold pieces, Terry. Oh, they were... Ah. Yeah, $20 gold pieces. And my cousin said, put it back. It's not there. And when I dropped it into the spot on the table where I picked it up, you could see the wood from where this coin was sitting. And, you know, I really should have picked it up and turned it over to see what, exactly what it was. But when we got back to camp, my cousin told his dad, uh, his uncle, Vero Hunter was his name, and uh, I tried to tell my cousins about this area that we went to because when we were leaving camp two days later to go back home from Mountain Home, he said, he was pounding because he wanted to go get some gold that was on that rock. And uh, I said, well, when we get old enough to drive, Jesse, we'll drive back there and get this gold off this rock, this brown gold. And Robin Wanzite said, a place looks like horse foot track. And... Uh, One once I told my dad, the gold is in spring closet. And I didn't know exactly what that meant, other than we were little explorers and we wanted to check out everything. And we went a lot farther than our parents did because they were so much older than we are. And as kids, as anybody knows, 
hike a lot farther than most people. Because so, so back to your 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 cousin told his dad. Did he believe him? Or his not? uncle, yeah. He said, "Yeah." Rango picked up a coin, and I told him, "Put it back. It's not yours." And my uncle said, "Good job." But my cousin Jesse wanted to go back and get gold off that rock, so he was pouting and my. So, I'll stop you one quick. so for those, you know, you said brown gold, and people are going, "What the heck is brown gold?" But when I was at Geneva, or when I was at. Uh, Kennecott, and I don't know if you probably never went there. I was working in the gold room, and their refined gold yeah. was brown. It does not look like gold. It looks like dark dirt. Yeah. So you could. You so go, actually. Until you go to pick the bucket up, man, you can't hardly pick it up. It's so heavy. Yes. So it, it looks brown. It does not look gold colored at all. I mean, it's not. Yeah, you could be standing. Not, this, is, this is flower gold, but it is brown. Some of that gold is brown. Yes, it is. Okay. So it is brown. And gold is also in a black shell, like a black, uh, I'm not sure what kind of rock they would call it, but it was black. And uh, so this brown gold that was on this rock in the depression, uh, if you ever went to that area, they say you, you could be standing right next to gold and not even know it. And like you said, Terry, the gold is actually brown. Some, some, some of it. Unless you get into some of the mines where you could actually see some of the gold veins like the Karisha Knob. And uh, I've been up there like seven times this last summer because I get stressed out from the city life and say, well, I'm taking a three and a half hour drive to go to, the, to this mountain that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. It's called Crow Creek. And it's very, very close to the Karisha Knob, and a lot of people don't like me to tell this, but when I was down in that area, and I still look for it today, I see circles on the ground, and a tree that was looked like somebody cut down, it had a, it had a, a burned in wood on this quick and aspen that was old, and it had a, a burnt picture of a cannon, and a priest bent over, like this, like look close on the ground, you know, look closely on the ground. And I was actually looking for a place that my mother took me that Lester Bush from Oklahoma took $67,000 worth of gold out of this area where there was a sleeping bag and some camp equipment that Del Bascom talks about in his book. I actually seen that when they talk about Caleb Rhodes mines, he had seven of them. And uh, I could spend a good 16 hours straight telling you some of these places I went. Um, Gail Rhodes, bless his soul, died. And speaking of Rock Creek, well, I'm, I went up there just this last summer uh, when the water was falling over the waterfall. Terry, you don't have any aspirin towel Advil, do you? I might. Let me go see. And uh, so, I'm going to have to stop the video for a minute, you guys, so that I can try to figure out what's going on with my head for a minute.